Get your special horoscope for the year ahead 2020 at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous superstar Sagittarius. Welcome to your horoscope for the month of January 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing month it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And it is going to be in the first part of the month that we have a couple of really notable moments uh, taking place that a lot of people are paying attention to. So on the one hand, we're going to have a lunar eclipse. This is a powerful lunar eclipse happening in a part of the sky for you that has to do with meaningful change, meaningful transformation. It has to do with regeneration as well, feeling different. And for some Sages out there, you might wake up realizing that you are different, that you have changed in fundamental ways. For others, this part of the sky is going to speak to your relationship with financial institutions. And it's possible now that the universe is going to ask you to pay attention to financial matters. Now this is happening right around the 10th and it is this lunar eclipse that is standing across the sky from the conglomerate, okay, that I'm calling anyways. I'm calling it the conglomerate, which is this whole cluster of planets right across the sky. And the most notable of these planets is Saturn and Pluto. These two planets will meet in the sky right around the 12th is when this energy perfects, but we're certainly feeling it all month as these planets are quite close together. But these two planets getting together, it isn't just about this rare meeting that astrologers have been talking about for years, but the sun is there and Mercury is there, the asteroid Ceres is there which means that it's adding that much more heat and energy and conversation to the mix. So imagine this stellium, what is the proper name for it? Not conglomerate, I'm calling it conglomerate, but this stellium of planets standing across the sky from the lunar eclipse, and it can feel as if there is a lot on uh, your sense of self. There are external factors that are leading you to examine yourself more deeply to realize what it is you really feel and what it is that has to change within you. You may be looking at power and any kind of uh, a sense of where it is that you feel that you've lost power, uh, what it is that you feel you need to do to gain power. For other Sages out there though, this is going to be more a time where you are connecting more deeply to a spirit of change, of transformation, wanting to rise in some way, wanting to leave behind you some part of whom it is you used to be and consciously move forward. So these are some of the themes that can show up now. But yes, for some Sages out there, this might be a time when you're having to pay attention to money matters, whether it is related to a loan or a grant or a, a matter having to do with a, a mortgage but it can also be that you are wanting to secure funding for something that you really want to do and how it is that you are trying to change your income. Now, regardless, remember when we have such strong financial energy, it means that the money you need is there. There's more than enough money there, but the universe just wants you to pay more attention right about now. And the other thing is, that this is about you getting honest. If this energy is anything, it is honest. It is helping you to examine yourself more deeply and in the process, find your truth. And it is in finding your truth that you connect with authentic power. This part of the sky is connected to a truly authentic sense of self as well. And you are emerging at this time in powerful and important ways. Uh, moving forward at this time in a deeper sense of whom it is you are and the strength that is within you. It is from this point forward, after we have this lunar eclipse, um, from here on out, speaking in terms of your uh, zodiacal sky, it is from here on out that the energy starts to shift. First becomes much more visionary after this, then becomes more about manifesting after this. For now, with where you are, it is about digging deep, realizing what stays and what goes as part of eventually getting to the place where you can be that much more open to the world and open to yourself than you've known before. It is that important and consequential a time. 
as we navigate later into the month, right around the 24th, is when we are going to have a new moon. This new moon is happening in a part of the sky for you that has to do with siblings, cousins, and neighbors. It has to do with communication and information. Now, what's happening with this new moon that's important is that it will be speaking in harmony with Chiron. I love that energy for you. Uh, Chiron right now is in a part of the sky that has to do with joy and fun. It has to do with the children in your life. It has to do with creative endeavors. So that's a really beautiful energy supporting your sense of expression, your ability and your desire to express yourself arising from this very heart oriented place. And this energy uh, can also indicate that it is you being a big kid or the kids in your life that allow you to feel that much more healed or at least moving in a direction of greater healing than you knew before. But it is Uranus that is also speaking with this uh, new moon as well. Uranus is in a very daily part of your sky, um, having to do with your daily habits, having to do with your workplace. And that challenging connection between Uranus and this new moon indicates uh, surprises, perhaps even shocks are part of what ultimately leads you to find your voice. Now with this energy though, it might be a sibling, cousin or neighbor that has uh, developments in their life that take you by surprise. It could be a coworker or immediate supervisor that tells you what's going on with a, a sibling, cousin or neighbor of yours that is part of what takes you by surprise. But also with this, I would just be really careful how you're communicating because uh, without intending to, you may communicate in a way uh, that provokes a particularly strong reaction, perhaps an erratic reaction uh, from a coworker or immediate supervisor. So these are some of the types of situations you might wanna be mindful of. Something that you say very innocently could end up being a part of uh, a sense of changed circumstances within your immediate environment. Now, the other part of this is there's a sense with that beautiful connection to Chiron that whatever may be happening is ultimately good. It is connecting you to yourself and your truest desires and your heart and your joy. It is connecting you with an understanding of what it is that you really want, what it is that you really have to say, what it is that you uniquely want to share with others. And that can be part of the great opportunity of this time. And I would also add, if it is siblings, cousins, and neighbors who are a surprise a minute right about now, which is possible, um, know that there's nothing like a real heart to heart with one of these people to ultimately understand each other that much more. Also this month, you are going to have Mars enter your sign at the very beginning of the month. This cycle tends to last a month and a half, so it'll take you right into next month as well. And this can be a time of heightened energy, physical energy certainly, but also determination to move your life in a direction you desire to go. You may be feeling things more strongly than usual as well. So be on the lookout for that. As long as you are directing this energy towards the future you desire to create, you can be absolutely unstoppable at a time like this. Now, where it comes to matters of love, Mars can also speak to matters of love, but it's more the physicality of love, okay? So it is passion, it has to do with desire as well. And chances are with Mars in your sign, you are feeling that much more motivated to connect with others. It isn't enough just to have a fantasy or have a desire, but to actually uh, realize a connection with other people is gonna matter to you now. If you're open to meeting someone new, you're gonna be motivated, which is amazing. And at the same time though, you will be particularly gutsy uh, in your efforts to actually connect with new people. And that alone can ensure that you have at least a few interesting moments where you feel especially lit up by a flirtation or by an interaction that reminds you of what it feels like to actually desire another. For those of you who are just starting to date somebody, Mars in your sign can be interesting. So the important thing is that it does encourage you uh, and gives you more energy to spend more time with this person, to become more intimate as well and get to know them more. Um, 
But what can happen with this is that we can start to get irritated with the people around us. Uh, and that takes me to if you are in an established bond, it is especially true as well. Um, and if it is that you find yourself uh, frustrated, like just a little bit more than usual frustrated uh, with your partner or with somebody that you're getting to know, it is important for you to take stock, to take that little bit of a moment. Is it genuinely the case that your partner is doing something frustrating or is it that there are changes you desire to move towards, but since that's not coming together, it's easier to direct your attention to your partner because that can be a little bit safer than actually having to take ownership for the change you wish to experience. What I found with this is as long as you keep the focus on you and you're taking action to move forward, great things are possible, but also your relationship will feel that much easier as well. What I love about this month for you, well, there's a lot here, but I am going to say the fact that Mars is in your sign. I think of Mars as an interaction with the serenity prayer. It is a chance for you to understand the serenity affirmation that much more deeply, which is grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Those are three actions, three points of power. And it is going to be now that you are invited to practice the serenity affirmation that much more deeply to reach a space of genuine serenity more than you've known before. Well, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the 2020 year ahead, a uh, special horoscope preview for your sign. Uh, but first you can get a video like this every week by logging on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. It'll be a great month. Enjoy. Hello, fabulous superstar Sagittarius. Welcome to your horoscope for the year of 2020. This is your special horoscope for the year ahead. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing year it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. You know, anytime I do one of these year ahead videos, uh, part of the skill involves actually having to consider all that is happening and what is gonna be most important to you, really honing in on a couple of things that I feel are gonna to speak to you most personally as part of a larger trend ahead. And of course, as you know, I will talk about everything going on week to week, month to month, and through many special horoscopes that are gonna to have to be made in 2020 because of all the big moves taking place. But of everything happening, there are a couple of things that really do stand out to me for you. And first and foremost, that is...